Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video is my last video of 2019 and it's my makeup favourites of the year. Um, like I said before, some of these are going to be pretty obvious um, as I only have really one in each category. Some I have a few that you probably would know anyway. Um, but yeah, so these are kind of what I've been loving throughout the 2019. Some old favourites, some are new uh, discoveries and even quite new, just really recent new discoveries. Um, but yeah, so I really hope you enjoy it. If you're interested, then please keep on watching. So I think I want to go in some kind of like logical order. So starting with the skin portion first. I have mentioned this on camera before, but I don't often show it because it's kind of more before applying makeup situation. So it's the, um, this is from the brand This Works, it's the In Transit Camera Close Up. So it's the Mask, Moisturiser and Prime in One. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's, it's more of a skincare product that can work with a primer. So sometimes if I apply this and I go straight with makeup, I'll just use this as my primer, as well as what else it's, everything else is supposed to do. But if I use it in the morning, then I will go in with another primer just before I do my makeup, so it depends how long I leave this on for. But this really moisturises skin. It's quite a... It's not particularly thick cream, and when you apply it to your skin, it doesn't feel like it's a very hydrating product, just because of the um, kind of texture of it. I, I use it on days I'm not putting makeup, even if you are putting makeup on, it also really just helps prep the skin, and it's really, really nice. And I used to have the cleanser from This Works, and I really enjoyed it, so I might pick that up again soon, but for now, this is really, really good. Okay, so then when I do go in with the primer, the primer that I've been loving is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. As you can see, I'm pretty much out of it again this has been a really nice one it really hydrates the skin which i absolutely love and it does make makeup go on really well i think it lasts really well throughout the day as well um and it's one that absorbs really quickly as well into skin so it doesn't feel like there's an extra layer on there and yeah i just really have been enjoying this one a lot so when it comes to foundation and concealer i think it's no surprise that my hint beauty concealer is my choice for both foundation and concealer um in the summer i just use it as concealer because i don't tend to wear that much foundation but in the winter when i do want the more coverage to my skin i will also use this as a foundation as well i have my shade light mine is rapidly running out and glow organics where i get it from still doesn't have light in stock it has all the rest of the shades but well when i say all the rest it's quite poor selection of shades but they have the rest of the shades in stock just not light still at the moment so i'm waiting for that to come back in so i am using my ordinary serum foundation in the meantime which is a nice one but this is obviously definitely my go-to and it's just really nice on the skin it's quite creamy which i really like i do have to set it in my t-zone area because i am oily and because it's cream it can give a glow or an oily finish to my skin after a period of time um but what i will say is that it doesn't some foundations, when the oil does seep through, it starts to break up on certain areas. And kind of my main one, when it does happen, is my chin. But this, I haven't noticed that at all. It lasts really well. Yes, I'm shining at the end of the day, especially after work, because I can't powder throughout the day. But it looks perfect. Like, the coverage is still there. It hasn't moved, hasn't budged. I'm just a little bit more glowy than I was before. Um, but when I... When I'm not at work, I can set and it works perfectly fine. And yeah, it just gives so much, like you can really customise the coverage. So in the summertime, when I do sometimes wear it as foundation, I do put a few drops of like, I'll mix it in with a primer or moisturiser to give a lighter coverage to it. Um, but in the winter, I just go full on with a brush and go in because I like a slightly more fuller coverage in the winter times. So I love this. And I've noticed since using just this for like my base product that my skin has done so much better admittedly right now not so much but I'm going to blame the festive season and the holiday season for this because I don't have been eating that well or drinking that well um so but before that my skin had been doing so much better if you look kind of more the beginning of the year or even the end of last year you see my skin is not it wasn't that bad because people have had a lot worse but it wasn't great and recently it has been so much better, so I do put it down to this. So I'm just hoping light comes back into stock soon. So at the moment I've just been using this concealer and not as foundation, but usually I use it for both. So I don't have one for powder because, like I said, the collection powder is okay, but it's just, it kind of does just about what I need it to do, but it's nothing amazing. So I don't have anything for that. Moving on to bronzers. I think, again, it's going to be quite an obvious one for me, um, and it's the, oh, where's it gone, the Lily Low Sculpt and Glow Contour Kit. Now, technically, this is a contour shade, 
but because it's a bit too warm toned for my skin um, to do that, I like it as a bronzer and it works really nicely as like a matte bronzer. I did have the Lily Lolo Maui Beach Bronzer, which is really nice, but actually I think I prefer the tone of this one a bit more because although it's quite warm for my skin tone, the Maui Beach was even warmer and almost occasionally, if I went too heavy, it looked a bit orange. Even though it blended beautifully and stuff, but I think this is more my tone. I do have a new one of this, but I left it at my house. Um, so yeah, this is why I bought this one. But this blends beautifully. And yeah, I'd say it depends on your skin tone. But for me, this works more as a bronzer than a contour, which is why I use it for that purposes. I don't particularly contour anyway. I don't really like it. So um, yeah, that for a bronzer, definite. And also one that I've been reaching back to again recently because of that one. Because I was running at that one originally is a Lima Pure Maracaibo bronzer which is a satin matte finish so it's no shimmer to it but it does have that slight kind of sheen to it which looks really pretty and it's quite a lightweight bronzer and it's quite a soft bronzer as well but it is one you can build up so obviously it's in a um, mineral form but I find you can really kind of go in lightly if you just want a slight warmth to the skin or you can go in a bit more bit by bit and build it up and it works really nicely and it also just looks so smooth on the skin um so that is obviously another bronze that I really have been loving so, um like I said some of these are not new discoveries but I love them nonetheless um so blusher wise I think there's two oh no there's three blushes I have three brushes that I've been loving throughout 2019. I'll start with probably my oldest one, which is the Nip and Fab Blusher Palette. I like this. It's got four different shades of blusher, and I can kind of work with it really well to pair it with whatever makeup look I'm doing. They blend really nicely, really nice pigmentation to them, easy to use, and yeah, really, actually, it's not, it's kind of, for drugstore, I'd say it's, I wouldn't say it's inexpensive, but it's not expensive either. Um, and it's really accessible as well. And yeah, I've just really been reaching for this a lot and works beautifully. Another one, it's no surprise, it's probably the Lily Lolo Coralista Duo. This one here, because coral tones are my favourite types of blushes. I just think they complement my skin really well. I think actually they complement a lot of makeup looks really well. This is a really nice, smooth... Um, formula and you can really build up the pigmentation and there's no shimmer it's just a matte blusher and yeah it works really well and I've used it in so many videos because it's such a nice blusher and then the final one is a slightly more new discovery and it's a cream blusher and it's from the brand Ritual de Fee um, and it is obviously the shade Delirium. Now when I originally went to do a first impressions on uh, Ritual de Fee there was a different cream shade blusher shade that I really wanted which actually I think it's now out of stock or they don't do it anymore which is kind of like a a cool toned yellowy orange and it looked really cool but anyway I picked this one up which is again it's kind of more of a coral toned um, blusher which again is my favourite but this works so beautifully um, it's not as creamy as you'd expect it to be which actually works quite well because then it stays on the skin well whereas I think if a blusher is too creamy um, then it disappears a lot faster and especially if you're someone like me who's got oily skin because I do love the kind of radiance look I like the creamy products but obviously I've got oily skin so I have to be careful and try and balance things out but this works really well because it almost it goes on like a cream but it does set as well which I just think it works really well and you put this on your eyes and your lips I like using this as a lip product as well because it works it kind of it's nice to pair the two together um but yeah but I actually want to pick up some more of these because it's kind of my the best cream blusher that I've tried so far and um, I've tried stick ones before I've got other creamy ones that are just a bit too creamy whereas this is quite a nice one because like I said it goes on creamy but it sets itself as well so it kind of is perfect for lasting as well but it's a really nice um um it's a really nice cream blusher and also 2019 was when I discovered the brand Richard Defeat and I'm so happy I did because it's got more of like the editorial products which I really love and I love editorial looks which I know I haven't done one in a really long time so definitely 2020 on a kickstart the editorial looks again and yeah this is definitely a great clean beauty brand to kind of do that with for sure. And moving on to highlighters I've just got three no I've got four highlighters so one, two are going to be, they're probably all four, no surprise, two are not new discoveries, two are. So I'll start with the two old ones, and one is the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. I mentioned before, I'm desperate for a clean beauty version of this, because this is perfect. So I've got mine in shade Fair One, Doe for Applicator, and literally it's great to put under makeup 
because it has that beautiful glow to it and it's nothing like super intense it's a real natural glow it looks really really pretty you can put it on top of makeup as well because it does have a little bit of coverage so um it's kind of perfect actually for those no makeup makeup days where you want your skin glowing but just a little bit of coverage it works really well but yeah it does add a little bit of coverage as well so um it works really nicely there's no shimmer no glitter it's just purely a sheeny kind of glow to it and yeah i really wish there was a clean beauty version of it out there if anyone knows of one that is very similar in the clean beauty world let me know because yeah i think this is such a beautiful product and it just works so so well and like i said for makeup days or no makeup days this is really really lovely the other one is i don't have the single of it with me because i just thought i'd use up the pans of the duos but it's obviously the lily lolo um Illuminators, in particular champagne, is probably my go-to. Rose is pretty, but champagne, I just think, complements a lot more looks, in my opinion. This is, again, one with no sheen and no shimmer. This isn't going to swatch particularly well, because it's one that looks better on the skin, because that doesn't look so great there. But I've used it in several videos, so you know how it works. But, um, yeah, it's definitely more of a lit from within. I'll try and insert a clip from one of my old videos of me applying it because that's not going to do it justice. Um, but yeah, it's definitely more of a lip from within. There's no shimmer, no glitter, so it's just purely, it looks like your skin is naturally glowing type of thing. But it does pack a punch as well. Um, it's not the most intense intense, but it does give an amazing glow to the skin. And yeah, I've been loving it because it just blends really nicely onto the skin as well. And yeah, that's probably no surprise that that was in my um, favourites and obviously two new discoveries which you probably will also guess and it's from another brand that I've discovered in 2019 very recently and it's the two Ether Beauty um, Supernova Crush Diamond Highlighters so very recent discoveries I got both so pure diamond dust and pink diamond dust um, I did that first impressions not too long ago. These are really beautiful highlighters. So this one is my kind of more everyday one. It does have some shimmer to it. So the Lily Lola ones don't. Like I said, this one does have a little bit of shimmer to it. So you will see it in the sunlight, but it's nothing too intense, which I don't mind because I don't like a really chunky, glittery, shimmery highlighter. But this is this is absolutely fine for me. Um, and it's more of like the lip from within type of glow for me. Um, or has that very similar vibe which I think is really, really pretty. And again, I'll certainly clip of me applying it in that first impressions. And then the other one, which is kind of more, which probably is my most intense highlighter that I've owned to date. And it does have a little bit more shimmer again to it. Um, and it gives much more a wet, forward finish on the skin. So it's definitely more what I'd call my party highlight because it's just so intense, very wet looking on the skin. It is beautiful in all fairness. And it's just, they are very smooth and yeah smooth feeling I would say that I still think I prefer my Lily Lolo ones over these two just because I prefer ones when like just because it's got no shimmer at all in it but I'm really happy to discover these and I love the packaging it's fully recyclable and I love what the I love the brand in general so I'm very happy to pick those up and I do enjoy wearing both those highlights okay, moving on to kind of the eye area so the first two well, I've only got one of each because so my standard so eyebrows is the Lily Lola Eyebrow Duo in Dark. You can see mine is a mess. Sometimes I just go with powder. Sometimes I like to mix the wax with the powder because it creates like a more of a pomade. And it just gives the most natural look to the brows. Whereas brows can be drawn on. And I just find it so easy to work with. I use a small angled brush with it. This, is, this one here. This is the Luxie 215. Small angled and it works really well for my purpose. And then obviously my eye primer will be the Lily Lola eye primer, which is again, no surprise. It is the only one I use. I've lost, well now this one finished, side finished up. Oh God. So I'm using actually the yellow side for now and I do have a backup ready to go, but it just works really well because it does cancel out some of the discoloration in your eyelids, which is what I like. And it's just quite smooth and just everything applies really nicely on top of it pigmented and lasts a really long time so that is what that's the eye primer I'm using I think for the entire year let's be honest so yeah okay, moving on to let's go with eyeshadow palettes now so I've got a few more variety I'm gonna start off with the order that I got them in the year I guess so the first one 
and actually the first two are non-clean beauty they're cruelty free but they're non-clean beauty the first two and the first one is the so sue times kaylee um, bible palette this is a really beautiful palette it's got a range of colors the foils in this are beautiful and you can create some really kind of interesting looks with this a whole variety i love that they've got lots of mattes in here as well so i love that red that kind of red and black together look really cool it's quite a dramatic look but they've got plenty of really beautiful like i said shimmers in fact it's got the matte white in here because i can mix it with other shades to get lighter colors um and so you can actually mix like the dark purple in with the red and it kind of does make it a darker red. I wouldn't go black and mix it in with the red. I'll use those as a colour combination but not as in terms of mixing because it wouldn't work as well. Um, or even actually that beautiful. That's my favourite shade in this whole palette, Unruly. Um, even that mixing with the red just creates a different tone and I really like that. And I just think you can create such a variety of looks with this. Um, I watch Kaylee. I think she's an amazing makeup artist and she's just a really cool look. I really have been enjoying this palette. The second palette, um, which I've used more kind of on for my Halloween looks, I did on my Instagram, and it's the Be Perfect Carnival XL Pro palette because this has pretty much every shade you could possibly need in it. I've hit pan on that black because it's such a great black. But yeah, this was I've used this obviously as just regular makeup as well, but. During the month of October, I did the 31 days of Halloween um, on my Instagram. This was a lifesaver because I used it for so many different looks. Just because it's got so many colours. I didn't want to put Nessie face paint on my face to try and save my skin. I use eyeshadows instead and they work beautifully. And these shimmers are so lovely as well. I love this shade here actually in Spark, which doesn't seem... It's just... It's a beautiful kind of bronzy colour. Cargo is one of my favourite paired with nuke it's just such a gorgeous one and the mattes blend really beautifully as well keen is such an interesting like yellow um what are the other ones i want to show oh persuasion that's beautiful so again, a lot of colours, the mattes and shimmers both work really beautifully and like I said, I haven't used it much on YouTube but on my Instagram for doing my Halloween stuff, it's been an absolute lifesaver and I love it and like I said, you can create so many looks with that, it's kind of got all the colours you could possibly need in there which is perfect. Okay, the final three, I have got single eyeshadows to go through next but I'm talking about eye palettes at the moment, so final ones, I'm guessing is no surprise, they are clean beauty. And yes, I know I've only just discovered them, but actually, of all the eyeshadow palettes that I own, that are clean beauty, I don't actually own that many. I own more kind of single eyeshadows in the clean beauty bit. Um, so I've got the Hermes of Pure palettes, which are really pretty, the Lily Lolo one, um, Benacos, the PHB, which I don't use that often, to be honest. And I also, I did have the Pacific ones, but I kind of got rid of those because I don't actually, I've decided I don't really like Pacific eyeshadows, they don't work that well. But mainly for Clean Beauty, I use singles. So these are kind of the first palettes I've really fallen in love with. Like, I love the Hunter Pure ones, don't get me wrong. Um, but these I've just absolutely fallen in love with, and I think you're going to know exactly which ones they are. And yes, I know they're recent, but it's fine. Actually, the Rose Court, this one isn't that recent, but these are the Aether palettes. Um, I've got three out of the four. I'm very tempted to get the Crystal Gem one just so I've got the collection. But the first one I got um, was the Rose Quartz. It's a really beautiful palette. It's kind of more the cool tones. Very soft colours. Um, I think quite a nice bridal palette. And definitely obviously a very everyday palette as well. You can smoke things up as well. Um, you've got a mixture of matte, shimmers, metallics and duochromes in this. Um, my and I'm just, the thing I loved about this palette when I first tried it out, because this was the first one I tried, were the mattes. I thought the mattes blended amazingly. I thought the shimmers in this palette needed a bit of work. However, in the other palettes, that's not the case at all. So I just think this is a softer overall palette. So I think that's a kind of the overall vibe they were going for, a softer, gentle palette, which is absolutely fine and beautiful. I think it's fully recyclable. There's no mirror in it to make it fully recyclable. And yeah, I just like... The design of it as well then the next one i discovered is the amethyst because well, actually i picked up amethyst and solstice at the same time but i played with amethyst first because it was kind of my go-to for color because it's purple and i love purple eyeshadows and things like that um so this is the amethyst palette like i said the um mattes 
blend beautifully just like the rose quartz but they're more richer in this one the shimmers and metallics give more of a more of um have more intensity than the rose quartz for sure this is much more intense um and really beautiful shades i like that you still got the neutral tones to kind of create that more a wearable transition and you can go with some of these other fun colors as well so this one crown chakra is a gorgeous rich brown like such a beautiful brown oh this one transcendent is gorgeous this one i don't just pick up mystic i don't know if it'll show it on camera but it does have like some really light purple running through it which i really like because it gives it that little something different and obviously it ties in with everything else and then oh, actually i really like this one here this is psychic which is kind of like a grey, but it's got that shimmer to it, which I think is quite cool for me, creating a smoky eye look. So, yeah, again, really, really beautiful palette. Like I said, the shimmers pack a lot more punch in this one than the rose quartz, but I think it's just overall a more intense palette anyway. Um, but yeah, I love the purple theme running through it, and these are some beautiful, beautiful colours for sure. And then the final palette that I played with and that I got from Ether Beauty, and actually... Despite the fact I love purples, I think it's my favourite palette and my most used out of the three for sure. And it's the Solstice palette. So it's kind of neutral tones like the Rose Quartz, but it's much warmer. They're kind of more deeper, more intense as well. And the shimmers are gorgeous in this palette. Um, I would say you do get these do come off warmer than you expect sometimes. So this one is Soul. And on the eye, it comes off more orange than you think it would do, judging by the pan. But beautiful blending. Oh, this one's really nice. This is Sister. And it, it kind of has that kind of it's a slight purple tone to that brown, which I think is beautiful. Amber is one of my favourite shimmers for sure. That is gorgeous. And then what else do I love? Oh, I really like this one here as well. This is Energy. Really beautiful. And actually, I am wearing this palette on my lid portion today i've got something different on the lower one but i just went in with all the mattes from this palette and did that like a transition through the crease on the outer portion here i've gone with which one did i go with um solstice this one here i then moved on to energy which i swatched for you put in a bit of ruby and then this bit i went with amber and finished off with the inner corner with citrine beautiful champagne Oops. <laughs> so that's kind of the top bit so it definitely has that kind of warmer vibe to it a really beautiful palette and like i said they blend beautifully the mattes are definitely some of the best matte eyeshadows in the clean beauty that i've tried so far for sure the shimmers are gorgeous as well the rose quartz like i said is just a slightly softer palette out of all of them um you do get some kickback in this palette um but that's because these shades are more intense so you literally take a brush so literally you just need to go in a few times because you will get kicked back and then you'll get the pigmentation that you need. I, for the shimmer portion, will say I prefer something like a shading brush like this. This is the E25. So I pick up some of this. Oh, so I might have some blue on it. And then I can go in and just whack that on. So yeah, they do get kicked back and stuff like that, but that's because there's more pigmentation. So you don't need to go in to the pan as much as you would do with a different eyeshadow necessarily so that's just something to bear in mind i know they're very recent but i have absolutely been loving those palettes for sure so moving on to the single eyeshadows so obviously i absolutely love the lily lolo mineral eyeshadows the loose mineral eyeshadows i think they've got some really beautiful formulas and i just think the color selection is gorgeous now there are three when i think about it that i absolutely love throughout this year so two discovered a while ago this um this year and it's shade lily uh, Pixie Sparkle and Deep Purple. I did that festival look with it using the green opal. But Pixie Sparkle is probably my favourite out of the two for sure. It's this one here. It is beautiful. And I am partially wearing this one on my lower lash. I kind of went in with both Deep Purple. And I started off with Pixie Sparkle and decided I actually want the Deep Purple. So I kind of got a mix of them both on my lower lash line. But that's definitely my favourite out of the two. Then... Deep purple is again just gorgeous. These are all shimmer ones. I think I prefer the shimmery ones. Although actually, Witchy Poo, which is a matte black, is beautiful. 
so that's deep purple really again stunning and then one that i discovered recently that i just think actually i'm gonna get so much wear out of it in 2020 and i think it's just a beautiful color is khaki sparkle it's just a beautiful colour. It's kind of unique to my collection. And especially when you wet it, it brings a lot more of that gold to it. Um, and a lot of people seem to love this shade as well when I did that video on it, using it. Because it is just a, such a beautiful colour. And it's kind of wearable, but it also has something different to it with the gold running through it. Which I just think is such a nice colour. So, something else I enjoyed with the Ritual Defeat Eye Soot. Now, one of these is a more celestial um, eye soot. Which I actually quite like using as a highlighter as well it's just a creamy kind of shimmery sparkly um product which you can just put over the eyes and it gives kind of more of a wet finish to the eyes or i like to use it as like an editorial highlight type of thing really pretty and obviously then i've got the ashen ember eye soots in love spell and obsidian which um i did do a video not too long ago on obsidian um but these are really cool for me it's kind of similar to the blush where they're kind of like a cream type product do make sure you put the lids on properly because they will dry out um but yeah they're kind of like a cream product and you can pop them onto the eyes and they do dry down to more of a powder finish which i think is really really nice so it kind of you've got that extra blending time because they have got the cream start but then they will set in place which i think is really nice and you kind of build them up you can either go in with your finger to get a wash of color or you can go with a brush and build it up that way really pack on the colour. I think out of the two, I think Love Spell is my favourite. I think it's really pretty. Obsidian is really nice, but it's quite hard to work with in terms of the colour without it looking too messy. Um, if you're going to do like a black smoky eye. But yeah, I really, again, I'm glad I discovered Richard de Fee in this year because it's perfect for, like I said, some of the editorial looks. And yeah, those I really have been loving. Another brand I absolutely love to discover because in this year... Um, because I was on the hunt for kind of clean beauty but bright eyeshadows um, and it was a brand Silk Naturals and I had to get them shipped over from America did have to pay custom charges and stuff like that and I picked up a whole bunch of shades and actually they were really beautiful the colour of blue colour I picked up is more for packing or wing liner when you blend it it looks terrible but for packing it's okay it's a matte blue um, but actually really having said that I wanted to discover it for the bright colours which is amazing yellow and there's some greens in there and stuff like that the two that were my favourite actually aren't particularly colourful. So one I used recently was Oil Slick, which is kind of the black, which has um, the blue and purple shimmer running through it. I did my first New Year's Eve look, but I didn't quite go so well using it. But it's a really overall beautiful colour. Um, I have used this as well in another video. And it just creates a beautiful kind of deep smoky eye with that glitter running through it it's absolutely beautiful and then also another one is a shade naughty which is a green one but it's not necessarily an intense green or like a really bright green sorry but again really beautiful actually not far off the pixie sparkle but it's just not as um turquoise as pixie sparkle but again a really beautiful color really nice formulation you just pack them on you need again the tacky base to use them but you can create some really colourful looks and like I said I was really after um because I like playing with colour and I was really after finding some really good clean beauty colourful eye products and Silk Naturals is definitely one of the great ones it's just a pain I have to get them shipped over and stuff like that um and the final one is quite a new one and it was one of my friends recommended me to try out and I absolutely loved it and it's the Gress Eye Tint and this is in the shade Plum. Again they've got a really bright green one which I'm tempted to pick up. So again it's another weird one where it's kind of like it's creamy but it does dry down as well. Um, and it just feels, and it doesn't, it, it feels really lightweight on the um, skin like that. So you can use your finger to create that nice wash which I think is beautiful. You can use it as a base for other eyeshadows to go on top which I think works really well. Or if you use a brush, you can really, really build it up as well. So it's kind of a great all-rounder, uh, multi-use product. Um, I can imagine actually that looked quite pretty on the lips and things like that. But yeah, there's a bright green one, which I'm tempted to try out and pick up, um, just for some fun. But this is a really nice product. And a little goes a long way, so it's going to last me a good long time as well. And I just think it's a really beautiful colour. And the mascara, I think it's no surprise, the Lily Lola Big Mash Mascara. It just gives me the volume I like. Works really well. It's starting to dry up, so I do need to get a new one quite quickly. But yeah, I really have been enjoying it. It's my kind of go-to mascara. But the discovery of this year, um, and that was because I won a competition, was actually the Avril Mascara. Now, this one I 
think it's great separation and great length. I just need to put a couple of coats to get the volume that I like, but it works really well. And actually, even when you keep building up, the lashes don't come together, which I think is amazing. So I don't mind if it's not particularly volumizing first layer. As long as I'm able to build it up without it looking clumpy and horrible, then I'm happy with it. And I had, it has worked really well. It lasted really well. There was no transfer or smudging or anything like that. And yeah, it wasn't one I was planning on necessarily trying. I just want it in a competition. And I'm really happy I did because it works really lovely. So I've got a few lip products. I'm going to start with more lip care first. Well, I use it as like a normal lip product. And it's the Jane Ardell Sugar and butter lip product um and mine is pretty much running out so you've got the scrub side which really does scrub lipstick kind of or lip care balm side which um yeah as you can see i am running out but it gives a beautiful kind of metallic finish to the lips and i really really like it there's a bit of a mint sensation so it does feel like it's plumping the lips as well but this is a beautiful just everyday product when you want to like moisturize your lips give them especially in the winter give them nice care i really really enjoy this product and sometimes i've used it on top of other lip products like a lipstick just to give that metallic sheen to it because i think it's actually even though metallics lipsticks aren't my go-to this i really enjoyed it for that kind of metallic effect probably my go-to nude throughout the entire year was the benicost lip planet in brown and the benicost lip stick in pink honey um Mine is definitely rapidly getting smaller as I sharpen it, but yeah, this I used in almost every video that had to do with the nude lip, because um, I just think it's a really pretty nude combination. This is quite a moisturising, glossy lipstick, which I am growing to love kind of more glossy lips nowadays, so that has been really nice. However, I did lose this for a while, I couldn't locate it, so a lipstick that I wore instead for quite a long time paired with that Benacost brown lip liner was actually the Lily Lolo Vegan Lipstick in Au Naturel, which is a very different, um, it's quite a different colour, it's got more of a golden hue running through it and it's a lot less glossy as well. Actually, I'm wearing that lip combo today, so the uh, Benacost lip liner brown and the Au Naturel lipstick in, or the Lily Lolo lipstick in Au Naturel. And it does have a lot more of a golden hue to it in terms of the nude whereas the pink honey is a bit more pink and like I said pink honey is a bit more glossy as well that lipstick with this is it does have a sheen to it but it's not like super glossy but nude combinations I've just absolutely been loving they go with everything it worked perfectly so, speaking of lip glosses and something I wear all the time it's obviously the Lily Lola lip gloss, lip gloss in whispers so this is kind of more there is a clear one but this is the baby pink one I don't know I just think it complements so many different nude lips and it works so well I used to not particularly like lip glosses because I hated like the sticky feeling, the tacky feeling. You know, and sometimes it balls up, and then it, when you speak, there's like those lines. This doesn't feel. It feels so nourishing on the lips. It's so pretty. Like I said, I love pink honey. It does lighten the lipstick slightly because it has got the baby pink feel to it. But I just, it is my go-to lip gloss for 2019 for sure. And if I ever apply lip gloss, it's usually always that one. So, absolutely been last few are kind of red tone lipstick because I love red. Um, one is not a new, just well, is it new this year? It might be new this year, but I've used it quite a lot. It's quite an old one, and it's the um, ColourPop lipstick, Blur lipstick or Velvet Blur in Solo. It's a really nice, easy red, classic red, really creamy, but. Um, is matte but really creamy so it just it feels comfortable on the lips and it goes so well with a lot of looks that kind of red but a more recent discovery of red that i absolutely love which i don't really have a shade of red like it um well first of all is the lip liner benicos lip liner in red because i've only got one clean beauty red lip liner in red which is the lily lolo but it's a bit more pink than this one which is kind of more of a deeper red the benicos one and i knew i was gonna love this because i love the brown lip liner and i'm kind of tempted to pick up some more shades of those lip liners because i love them and then obviously the benicos lipstick in catwalk so again it's a red it's a much deeper red and works so beautifully on the lips and yeah, it gives them a bit more of a vampy red. And when I first applied it, I loved it. Um, it does have a more glossy effect, so you do have to do that kind of trick of sucking the thumb so you don't get it on your lip, on your teeth. But it's a really beautiful red. And I got a lot of compliments when I wore it as well because it's just such a, yeah, a gorgeous toned red, deep red. And it just looks beautiful. Um, and yeah, I think that is my 2019 makeup 
favourites. And like I said, some of the stuff is kind of obvious that I was going to pick it because it's what I use all the time. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what your kind of favourite products were for 2019. And again, let me know if there's any products you think I should try in 2020. Um, and leave me any requests for future videos down below as well. And any thoughts and opinions, any questions you have. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too long. And um, a happy new year to everyone because my next video will now be in 2020. Um which is crazy so yeah so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in 2020